your purpose? What is your passion? What empowers you? So I want to thank you guys for coming on. This is the weekly PPE with Tisha Lassane. What is your purpose? What is your passion? What empowers you? And this is our Mother's Day edition. Today I have four young, lovely young ladies on the uh, line with me and we are going to be just talking about their individual stories. These are mothers some grandmothers and we're just going to kind of delve into what uh brings them here their what their why their who why are they here today what has brought them to this place in life um they all have very significant stories and i'm going to give them the opportunity to just share who they are why they are here and talk about their story so we're going to start with um Let's start with Cheryl. Cheryl, if you could just share with the people, tell them your name and, and just a little bit about your story. Well, um, my name is Cheryl Clay and I have in my mind still three beautiful children. And now at this point, I have three, I'm sorry, three beautiful grandchildren and one now great-grandson, okay? Um, but my oldest, uh, um, I thought I had, thought I had, um, actually had had all of the children I was going to have, which was my oldest son and daughter. And um, remarried and a little one. When my eight month old was, um, had turned eight, eight months old, my oldest son used to like to take him because he said that's how he could get the girls at the mall. <laughs> so he would take him and they had already created a bond and was off the chain really, really, really close. And he, all the things he was going to do. And when my, my son had, was still in, in college, this was his last year in college, and um, had gone to Morgan State the first two years. These were his last two at BCU. And I was a staffing agent for the local temp service. And one of my customers was MCBBCU, and I had him to work there every time he came home for the summer, holidays, et cetera. They got him, gave him a job in his last year of college, which meant he was, they were going to pay for everything. Um, and had been on the job two weeks. And as a, in his field of a junior accounting, and... Um, went and bought a new car and first night of school, first night of his last year of his last year, first class was that evening after work and he went to pick the car up my friend was stopped at a light over in the East End. And a guy got into the back of the car, made them go around the corner, stopped them at the corner at, on the next street, and shot both him and his friend in the back of the head. Um, the place where he was was two blocks from an aunt of mine. They heard the shot, and one of my cousins was walking down the street of course, it's a new car that, Eric, that, my, that my son had. And so she didn't recognize the car. But she passed this car that the lights were still on, you know, just sitting there. She went to the store, came back to light. The car was still there. Um, she thought it funny, you know, who were they? And she went home and mentioned it to my aunt. The next thing they knew, they heard police sirens all up and down the street, the little to them that this was her cousin's 
sitting in the car dead. Hmm. And she had no idea that that was him. I got a call that morning from a friend of his who I had also gotten hired at MCBBCU. And they walked, Eric and them walked up the hill together every morning since he started the job. And he called me and he said, the, the friend, he said, Ma, have you heard from E? I said, no, should be at work. In that time, that was still pagers, you know. Mm -hmm. I paged him. And Eric never failed and called me back. He didn't care what, we, what he was doing. He would even call me sometimes and say, you know, you interrupted something, right? And I'm like, because he was 22, you know, and he said, you know, you interrupted something. I said, you know, if I'm calling, it must be important. He never answered, hmm. which then got us wondering, where was he? He didn't show up for his new job that he's been ev every day, every day there and happy to have this job. And I have a, my, my dad was a um, Richmond City cop back in the day and his brothers had kind of come behind him and I called the youngest brother to ask him to look into seeing what he could find out if, if he had heard anything any report of any sort and he said okay baby I'll, I'll call you back he said I didn't have to work today he said I'm gonna call my buddies you know and an hour went by and half hour went by and now two hours went by and I'm getting concerned. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I knew, I'm sitting in my kitchen with, with Joel, my newest baby, my eight month old. And down the driveway, here comes a, a black sedan. And I knew, hmm. I knew. So let me, I knew. let me pause you right there. Um, so I do want to say again that I am sorry for your loss because clearly it's been 25 years, but it's still very fresh, very fresh. So I am very sorry for your loss. But yes. that's, I'm going to pause you right there because that kind of connects to the next person that I would like to introduce on the panel. And it's my own mother. And you can, you can introduce yourself and share why you're here because her son was 22 and just kind of to, to share your story. My name is Lolita Lassane Thomas, and um, my story is: I have a my young my youngest son is ADHD bipolar, and we just found out not too long ago uh, has the autistic spectrum, and um, mm. it's really hard for me. Uh, he's been very very physical with me, very disrespectful. Um, basically, about maybe two years ago, right, right before Mother's Day, um, he attacked me. And um, I really thought I was going to die that day. And I've never shared that with with my daughter. But um, I really saw I really saw death that day. And um, it was just by the you know, grace of God that I was able to um, calm him down and get the police involved. But um, mental health is real and it is is really sad that there's not a mm -hmm. lot for them you know for us to help them with because it is everywhere and is um you know i'm just thankful i'm here the last attack um that he did to me was what 2000 and um 19, 19 when I, I when i was battling breast cancer then and um he attacked me really bad and that was the last time um, I mm. ended up letting him go, getting him his own place and just let him find his way because if I let him stay with me, I, I know I was not going to live to be here today. So that's how to. That mm. Okay. And he's, mm. he's currently 20. And so I, I asked you to speak because with Cheryl losing her son at 22, I'm sure those are things that you think about having to let go of your son at the age he was 19 when you had to get him out of your house in order to be safe. 
And so I'm sure those are some of the things that kind of run run through your mind, but we're gonna get back to that. I just wanna make sure we introduce everyone um, on the panel. And we also have Miss Sierra. Sierra, could you share? She's the, the mother of the only daughter that we're actually speaking of on today. Yeah, this one is, it's, it's still fresh. Like I um, was speaking to you guys before we started it, May 26 would be two years that my daughter was killed in a park due to senseless violence, black on black crime. It's just ridiculous. I wanna try to stop it, but it's, it's rough though. I went to the park with three kids and come back home with two. And having to explain that to my oldest daughter where she understand what's going on, but trying to keep her name alive so her brother know who she is because he was only one mm -hmm. when this first happened. So just to see him, like when he see pictures of her, he call out her name, but he don't remember anything about her. And it's just rough. It's still rough because I'm still dealing with the court case. Um, they caught three suspects. We went to court already for two trials and those where they were sentenced already. We got one more case to go through at the end of June. So it's still tough to deal with because it's like I really haven't been able to start that grieving process because I have mm -hmm. to keep reliving that day over and over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So it's rough just trying to be strong for myself along with my oldest daughter because that was her best friend. They were two years apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just trying to keep, like you said, mental health is something serious. Well, again, I am very sorry for your losses. Um, and even just for the loss, because grief is not about always losing someone to death. When right. you when you lose right. someone, you can lose them that's right. physically out of the house. So you grieve that's right. the person. And so I think yeah, that's, that's right. what my mother is going through. And we're gonna that takes us to our next person on the panel, um, Dana. Please share. Hey, everybody. My name is um, Dana Armstead Guy, and um, I'm a mother of four. I'm an 18 year old, a 14 year old, a five year old, and a one year old. Um, and um, <laughs> right, <laughs> it started all of <laughs> I, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it's something because um, at first it was um, my sons and I just listened to you all talk about your sons and the oldest child um, but you know it's something about those sons but the sons were who I had before I was married and then of course started life again with my sons and then my daughters um, and before um I met my husband, my, my youngest son um, lost his father to, you know, with the mental health awareness um, to suicide. So we were, you know, mm -hmm. growing from that. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But, um, you know, we, we met my husband who was a, a very, a wonderful man. And he loved all of us as if we were just right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you know, we've all grown and he's, he's helped both of the boys get into sports and be good at it. And, um, which landed my son into football. Um, my oldest son, um, Samar Malachi Lemons, he's the, um, the rifle player that has just been broadcasted in the, um, Eastern Henrico region, um, on March the 12th. Um, he fractured his neck in a play. Um, he was scheduled to take his SAT the very next day, preparing for college and army after, um, you know, looking for, forward to a life of independence to now have to depend on people to brush his teeth or scratch his nose or move his limb. And um, he's, you know, in a depressed state and, um, you know, it's, it's hard. He's now in Atlanta for physical therapy and it's really hard when there's nothing you can do but trust God which is what oh, we should be doing yeah. in the first place. Um, and his his accident happened on the third, on the 12th. And Nehemiah, which is my youngest son, he and I share the same birthday, which is March the 17th. So we spent that time at the hospital. <laughs> but, um, mm. you know, to balance out, not trying to put one over the other or, you know, focus more attention on one than the other. 
when you're dealing with multiple children is something which I'm sure I don't have to tell either one of you on the phone. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, I'm sitting here and I'm, um, I'm grateful. While I am grateful that God is healing and delivering each of you on the phone, each of us on the phone, I'm so grateful just sitting here to you, Tisha, because it was not unto death. And I'm so grateful even in this very moment that God saw fit to let me still even see He's still working in my favor. He's still working on my behalf. And he's still working on y'all. And I'm just grateful to be here with y'all. Amen. Yeah. You are listening to Tisha Lassane with the weekly PPE on 105.3 Choice Radio. We have a Mother's Day edition and we have some awesome, phenomenal women on this mic today. And I'm just so excited that you guys took a moment of your busy weekends, of your busy lives to just come and talk with me and talk with all of Richmond and beyond. Um, Your stories are definitely um, something that have impacted me. I've been watching and reading and listening and and hearing and seeing. And um, the strength that you guys, each of you display from day to day um, is just remarkable. But I know that comes from the cloth that we're all woven from. I I know that, you know, the strength that comes from within um, with this purpose, passion and empowerment. Um, you know, your purpose is always asking you, what's your why? You know, what is your why? Why, why are you doing this? Why, why am I here? Your passion is what pushes you? What is your driving force? What, what am I going after? What am I passionate about? And your empowerment is who or what gives you the strength? And I don't know about y'all, but I know for a fact that God is the one that gives me the strength. He is my daily empowerment. He is my daily vitamin to get through things, um, and to even just hear the stories. You know, sometimes I'm an empath, so I absorb the energy that's around me. And sometimes I may experience, I may feel like I'm experiencing what someone else is going through just because of, of this gift that he's given me. Um, and so I just, I'm very thankful for you guys just being on today. Um, I do want to share with you guys that um, while some of you all have actually lost children, I'm thankful that you still have life that, that surrounds you. And I say that because every time we look at our situation, there's always someone with it worse. And I know recently in our city, we had the young lady who all she wanted was to have a child. That was yeah. her, her life thing, to have a child. And she didn't even think she could have kids. Finally had a child and she and her baby are gone. So, you know, when we think about it, you know, it's bad. And, you know, our hurt is our hurt. But I'm thankful that it's not as bad as it could be, you know? Um, And and I'm thankful that each of you have, you know, your kids. And like Dana said, it's difficult trying to kind of give that same love when you know that sometimes you got to pull a little bit more to give to that specific situation. And sometimes that specific Mm -hmm. situation is yourself. Mm -hmm. So don't forget the self-care. Don't forget right. the self-care. I know it's hard. And, and as mother birds, I tell my mom all the time, mom, take care of you first. Like, let the kids go. We're all grown. Take care of you first. Um, but I know it's hard. I know it's hard. So with that being said, I do want to share with you guys um, a song. And this is a time that I will be um, sharing the Tisha Lassane in the mix. And this is just a song that I wrote. And it's, it talks about as I look back over my life. Um, I went through a life where I I tried to commit suicide several times because I just felt like giving up on life. I felt like um, because of the life that God had given me, because I believe he's in control of all things, it was no, I had no reason to live. But as I look back over my life today and I look at all the things that I went through, I know that those things were, they happened to make me who I am and to be able to walk the path that God has for me to walk. So no no matter how ugly it was back then, I'm thankful for that. And so Mm -hmm. I hope and pray that at some point in your healing process and in your journeys, you can say, you know what, God, you took something precious from me. But I thank you for that because it has given me this and it has gotten me to this place. Um, So I'm going to share this song with you guys. And we're going to talk about it afterwards. As I look back by Tisha Lassane, you're listening to 105.3 Choice Radio. The weekly PPE with Tisha was saying. It's gonna be one for the book show. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Come on. Hey. As I look back over my life, I thank God for saving me. Come on, come on. For saving me. I look once and I look twice. Yes, 
progress Never gave nothing less than my best See, God is progressively working Strife, hate, pain, and all of this hurting He looked beyond me to my inside Fire won't shut up in my bones I can't lie A we away, Simba I got the lion's pride So thankful to the Most High As I look back over my life with Tisha Lassane as I look back on 105.3 Choice Radio we're going to get back to this amazing panel with these amazing women who are fighting the fight of their lives in, in their own um, respective ways so what y'all think about the song you know what I think about it <laughs> it was nice I like it I was over here jamming in my own little world <laughs> all right all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a real song right there, man. And I'm sure a lot yeah. of people can relate to it at some point or another. So um definitely. So we're yeah. gonna get to a few questions I have for you guys. Um because I know that y'all are just dying to see exactly what I called y'all on here for. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna just I'll call your name and, and then that'll be the person I'm just asking the question. Cause I'm just, you know, I definitely admire the strength that y'all have. Um Gosh, I definitely admire the strength. So, um, Cheryl, after the trauma that you've experienced with this particular situation uh, with, with your son, have you found peace? Yeah. Yeah, finally. Finally. Um, it, took a, it took a minute. It took a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but finally, to know... Um, you know, I because I know at the time I, I said, God, why didn't you just take me? Mm. Why didn't you just take me? He had so much to live for, as as all of our children did. All of our these women here, our children had so much more to life to live, mm -hmm. to experience, and and to to grab all that they could that God had for them, you know. And now mine won't. You know, and that's all I could ask him. But as time went on, it's almost like he was saying little stuff in my ear. Mm -hmm. Here and there, saying little stuff in my ear. I'm a, I, you know, I only had one good dream about him. One, 
my grandmother would see him. My mom said she saw him, you know, just different, you know, different things have happened to different people, but nothing, I, 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 I had nothing that I could say. And then I had one good dream. And it was after that dream that it was like he, he came to tell me, mm. I'm okay. I'm all right. Wow. And, and, and Cheryl, to say, you know, I think that happens. I'm okay. I think that happens a lot. Um, or I would say often when we lose someone on this side mm -hmm. of glory, when we lose someone, a lot of times, you know, whether it's violent, whether it's a natural death, it right. really takes them coming back to say, hey, live your life. I'm okay. Okay, I'm, I'm good, okay. you know? And so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thankful that you had that moment. Um, because some people never find that peace and some people are still searching for it. Took, it. it took a while. It did. It took a while. It really did. It took a while. And it wasn't a day, of course, that I didn't think about it. It mm -hmm. wasn't a day. Um, and I still do. But I think of him differently. You know, you know, I, you know, I got a, a picture just even, but it's still right here. See? Oh. That's my baby. It's just, it's, you know, it, it stays. It's, it's right here. It's always going to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, he's going to be a part, but, and he still is, never will change, but he's made me know he's okay. Amen. And, and maybe that's what God saw is that I needed that. I had to have that, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm going to speak real quick to that. And then I'm going to ask my next question. One of the things that, um, was very troubling for me when I decided to do this particular panel was thinking of how many people I knew who had lost a child to violence, gun violence, hmm. particularly. I said, wow, it's so many people that I could actually interview. This is not a good thing because we are all in the same city. And it was, it's, it's several people, Shani Washington from Creighton court. We grew up together in Creighton court. Um, wow. Gosh, it, it's just, it was so many. And I don't want to start calling our names because when I tell y'all, it was overwhelming for me. I told y'all I'm an empath. And so just like taking that in, I was like, oh my gosh, it's just so many people. Um, yeah. You know, and so gun violence is a problem. You know, mental it's health, sad. mental health is an issue, but it's not, it's a black people issue. It's our community. It's an issue in our community. Yeah. And and that's the that's the hardest part because we have the mental health where we have our kids who are, you know, ADHD or whatever the case is. But the foods that we're feeding our kids is contributing to those ADHD symptomatic behaviors. But we are living in urbanized inner city areas where, you know, we're not getting the same thing that people in the the rural areas are getting or the suburban life there. We're not getting those same. Yeah. We're not afforded the same thing. So it's almost like we're going to give mm -hmm. them freedom, but it's with condition. Right. Mm -hmm. And that condition right. is we put all of these things into their communities. We leave them there and they're going to become the cancer to themselves and kill the, within themselves. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's what, mm -hmm. when you look at mental health, you look at the violence, you look at, um, this hood repping this hood and just all of this crazy <laughs> stuff and then on top of all of that we have parents who are not parenting anymore mm. Mm. and so you, you mm. know on it, the it's, head. it's hard to, mm. you you know you have these kids for example sierra who <clears throat> excuse me the kids who actually you know who took your child's life took your daughter's life they were kids right. you know yeah and, and they, that's the hard part. Yeah, they were all around. My oldest niece will be 25 in July, and they were all younger than her. So Wow. Yeah, and then, like, wow. one of the guys, they actually, he played basketball with one of my nephews. So it's just, like, it, it's getting worse and worse by the day as kids. Like, we, it got to start at home. It's we have to start at home, and it, it takes a village. It, takes it a definitely village. do. And we got away from that, because now you better not say nothing to my child. <laughs> we right, got away exact. from that, you know. I'm exact. so sick of that. <laughs> exact. We, we got away exact. from it. We got away from it. So yeah, my exact. next question is going to come to you, Sierra. Has this experience wavered your faith? Have you questioned God? 
I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It, it, and to be honest with you, I, my mom is a Jehovah's Witness. Okay. So I was raised with, I still believe, but I'm not going to lie. I'm angry. And I'm asking yeah. why, like why out of all the adults that were out there, why did, why was it only kids that they got hit? Mm. I, I don't understand. Mm. I don't understand. And that. Uh, I still have my moments where I'm angry, but I try to pray to help me get through this. So, I mean, it's rough. I'm not going to lie. I have my moments where I still question why, and I know we're not supposed to question why, but it's easier said than done. And that is a very fair emotion to have. It's a fair emotion. It is. And, and God is. understands. His, mm-hmm. his son, Jesus, was angry with him. Mm-hmm. So if, if Jesus can be angry with God, then so can we. Yeah. But we have to, we have to, continue like you said to pray to get to that place where we can right. release and so yeah. i think that's the biggest thing so i i definitely i, I appreciate your can for being candid about it and being you know being real keeping it real um i have to be <laughs> absolutely um i'm going to go to dana and this is probably going to be a difficult question for you how can you prevent this from happening to someone else what do you think you can do to prevent this from happening to someone else? Um, in all honesty, there's um, there's nothing that can be done Mm-mm. in my situation to prevent it because while I may not have wanted it to happen or I may not have felt that it should have happened, this is God's will. This is mm-hmm. God's way. This is God's plan. And one mm-hmm. thing I never want to do is stand in the way of what God has already ordained or planning because I don't know what's on the other side of it. Amen. I have no idea what's right. on the other side. Right. Amen. Right. Okay. And see, right. you said, you know, we're not supposed to question God. I don't believe you ever said that because Jesus even asked him, yo, if this cup could be taken from me, go ahead and take that. <laughs> if, if this can happen, let's go ahead and pass that on. You know, so it's it's not even a thing of, you know, you question him. It's, it's you questioning him without believing his plan. And yes. it's okay to have right. those real feelings. And I have a real feeling that um, it's possible that it can happen again. You're this right. is possible that he tucked my son away at this rehabilitation center, but he can't move and walk out there if he wanted to, mm. to stop him from getting hit by one of these straight bullets here in Richmond. Mm. I don't know why he did, but I tell you what, I'm glad that he did. Amen. Now. I'm Amen. glad that he did. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and and mom, I'm going to ask this last question and then we're going to close out. Um, if you pray, what is your prayer? My prayer is for God to give me strength to be able to deal with um, the issues with my son. Um, it's very difficult uh, for me, because I have my daughter and then I have a, another son and then I have my grandchildren and I feel like um, all of me has been absorbed in him and I don't have any um, room or I'm so tired that I don't have any room to spread um, myself to them because I'm, I'm just burnt out. And so I pray and ask God every day to give me the strength um, to be here, to endure. And um, I'm sorry for crying, but to give me the strength Mm -mm, to be able to endure. Don't you ever apologize for that. You okay? Um, you know, to be able to do for my um son as well as my grandkids, and just give me the strength to be here to pray, and continue to be able to spread my love to them because I know I have neglected them, you know, not intentionally, but because of him. So I I ask God every day to just let them know that I love them and I'm fighting every day to just be here to, um, you know, be able to watch my grandkids and do for them. So, and we, and we're going to say it's not so much him, it's his afflictions because he is a sweetheart. Shout out to him. He's definitely right. a sweetheart. It's his afflictions that definitely keep him from being the best. But we're going we're gonna to stay in prayer that God is going to deliver him and that God will prevail, which we know he will in his way and in his timing. Yeah. Um, and right. with that being said, I just want you guys to just 
uh, wish a happy Mother's Day to whoever you choose. So Dana, who would you like to wish a happy Mother's Day on this Mother's Day weekend? Is it just one person? As many as you <laughs> would like. <laughs> as many as you would like. <laughs> so I'm not going to do like names and stuff, but of course I would like to shout my mama, who I'm very fortunate to still have here. Um, but I want to send a special shout out to moms who have lost children and moms who have lost moms because this is a very tough time for mm -hmm. a lot of people that I hold dear to my heart um, for that reason. Either they have lost a child or they have lost their mother. And um, I just pray that God continues to give them comfort and to know that this is still the day that they can celebrate um, because they deserve to be celebrated. Y'all deserve to be celebrated. People who are standing mothers or standing in the gap for a mother. I just pray that y'all find peace in the will. So Amen. happy Mother's Day to everybody. All right. Uh, and you. Sierra. Amen. Yeah, so I definitely want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers on here. And even you, I know you said you don't have a kid, but you take care of kids. So you mothering in some type of way. So happy Thank Mother's you. Day. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to throw that out there. But um, like Ms. Dana said, I definitely want to shout out to my mom and tell her happy Mother's Day. Because like without her, that's my backbone right there. Like she's been rocking with me through this process. And I know it's been rough for her. So definitely want to shout her out and tell her happy Mother's Day. Okay. And um, also to my mother-in-law, she's been gone for now for what, almost seven years now. Okay. So mm -hmm. definitely want to shout out Mother's Day to her. And she's not here with us, but I feel like she's still here with us in spirit. So. Amen. Amen. Yep. Uh, Lo? I want to get a, give a shout out to my mom. And um, to all the moms that are out here that um, are struggling with any kind of loss, because even when you're dealing with mental health, it's still a loss. Um, they're, they're here physically, but it's still a loss somewhere. And I just yeah. want to give them strength and tell them Happy Mother's Day. And um, just, you know, all the mothers that are dealing with something, Happy Mother's Day to them. Okay. And Miss Cheryl. I want to say happy Mother's Day first and foremost to all the mothers on this panel because I have just gotten to know three ferocious women who have are, are making it happen. They're making it happen. You know, whether they're still here and we're fighting for our children or gone. We're still fighting and we're still fighting for the ones that are left behind in the midst of all of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, I want to, want to, I want to definitely shout out to you guys. I want to shout out to my mom, my mother-in-law and all of the mothers, all of the other mothers out there who are battling, just trying to be a good mom. Yeah. All right. And from me to all of you guys in radio land, Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Happy Mother's Day to all of our strong mothers who are fighting a good fight. Happy Mother's Day to my own mother. Happy Mother's Day to all of the ladies on this panel. Happy Mother's Day to my mother-in-law, <laughs> my grandmothers, my aunts, all of you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> this is the, the 105.3 Choice Radio, the weekly PPE with Tisha Lassane. Be sure to tune in every Saturday from 2.30 to 3 p.m. Have you figured out your purpose in your tragedy, in this tragedy, have you figured out your purpose? That's a good one. I've, I'm coming to trying to figure it out. Um, I have, we have an organization that we created when this happened, it's um, MSD Cares. My main goal is to, if I can at least touch one family, one kid to make a difference where another parent won't have to go through what myself or what Ms. Cheryl has been through. Mm -hmm. I want to try to try to stop the, the, the crime because it's crazy. Like I want to stop black mm -hmm. on black crime. And like I said before, it starts in the home. I was raised in a household where I, we, my mom didn't play that. 
And I was scared Amen. to say certain stuff to my neighbors or <laughs> I didn't want my neighbors to hear certain stuff because I knew it was going to get back to mom. Yeah. So I want to try to do something that can to get back to where it used to be. Mm-hmm. Try to help these kids out because they don't have nobody out here like that Yeah, to help right. them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good, good. Um, Lo, do do you blame anyone, and have you forgiven them? Uh, to be honest with you, I, Amran, honestly, no, I haven't forgiven as of yet because I'm still going through the motions. So it's hard for me to start that process when I'm still dealing with everything. Um, because it's like you're reliving it. it yeah and when it first happened i had to talk to myself and and try to encourage myself that it's not my fault that this happened to her because i kept like why didn't i stay at home we should have just did x y and z and i had to come to the realization with the help of therapy therapy it, it helps a lot to realize that it wasn't my fault it shouldn't have happened we were just out having fun with our kids and due to senseless violence that's what happened Hmm. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to ask everyone this question low. Can I ask you that question? Do you blame anyone and have you forgiven them? I blame myself sometimes. Um, with, Mm-mm. you know, so many issues with him. Um, not so much of uh, the fact of, I blame myself on, on certain ways of me handling different things when it came to him. Um, I do blame myself for that. But now that I'm older and I'm dealing with my own issues, I'm learning now how to separate myself. And I've learned also not to blame myself because it's not my fault. Um, release it, release it. Right. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, so, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm healing from that. Okay. And so you used to blame yourself. And I, 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 that's the, I think that's a mother bird thing. I think that's just a mother bird thing where we, you know, mm-hmm. the first person, you know, you're in control and, and that's just, you know, that's your baby and you're here to protect your baby and provide. And, yeah. and when things go wrong, you automatically look at yourselves and it could be a father involved. It could not be a father involved. It could be the whole family involved, but mother bird is always going to blame herself. So release yourselves, ladies, release yourselves, release yourselves. Um, And Cheryl, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Do you blame anyone and have you forgiven them? Of course, I, I blame the person who did this for whatever their reason. Whatever their reason, whatever reason they had does not justify taking anyone else's life. Absolutely. Um, forgiving, I don't know yet. I'm, I've been continually praying about that. Working on it. I really have. I have been continual. It's just good. For some, it may be a shorter period of time. For some, it may be a longer period of time. Um, but I have ask God to to give that, please allow me to do that. Because I know that without me forgiving him, the person we know who it is, one sin is any greater or worse than, or or, or lesser than the other. Hmm. And how is he going to, how's he going to forgive me for anything I've done, anything I've said, anything? So I've, I'm I'm working, I'm working, I'm striving towards that. And I and I pray for your strength in that. Um, that is a Please. very difficult thing. Please. Um, and I Please. and I totally understand. Um, especially with with the two of you whose you know children were taken from you by right. senseless you know senseless acts, and I totally mm-hmm. understand that. It, it's it's very hard. It's very hard as a mental yeah. health counselor. You know, I I deal with clients who have these same sentiments. And the unfortunate thing about being a counselor is because I'm not a holistic counselor, I can't bring God into it. Right. But I, but I do it anyway. 
because God is right. in me. So they're going to see the light <laughs> anyway. Is. God is in me. Right. So, right. Um, one way or the other. One way or the other. <laughs> one way or the other. So um, I definitely am, am praying for you guys. And Dane, I want to ask you the same question. Do you blame anyone and have you forgiven them? Um, it is crazy because, of course, this situation is a lot different. Um, uh, I'm a very spiritual person, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be totally transparent. Um, when my son was um, sitting on the sofa with me at Christmas, I mean, it started staying with his dad recently, his last year of school, which, mm -hmm. you know, he's still up the street. So, um, you know, just coming in one time, and his dad's been awesome throughout this whole thing. Um, he was sitting on the sofa, and he was holding my newborn, well, my one-year-old, and um, it just was confirmed with me that it was the um, Beth Angel, and mm -hmm. we were just, we weren't talking about anything. We just were laughing and joking, and I heard in my ear, um, this is her first Christmas and his last, mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't receive that, right? Um, so I say right then, I say, God, please spare him. You know, spare mm. my child. Mm -hmm. Please spare him. I don't, I don't know who or what that was, but please, you know, spare my child. And um, to blame anybody, I really don't have to blame because he did what I asked him. <laughs> he did what I asked That's him. That's true. Amen. <laughs> Um, and I'm I'm sorry, y'all. I'm I'm trying not to be that that one, but um, just listening to y'all, just listening to y'all talk, just listening to y'all, you know, go over everything. I just I just want to read this. My birthday again is March the seventeenth. Um, so his name is Samar Malachi. Everybody calls him Samar at school, but he's always been Malachi to his family. Um, so with the sparing part, um, it took me to Malachi chapter 3, 17, right? Okay. 3, 17, my actual birthday, 3, 17, where it is, where it is. Then the Lord, where is it? Is this it? Yeah. <laughs> then the Lord. All powerful said, you people are precious to me. And when I come to bring justice, I will protect you just as parents protect an obedient child. Then everyone will once again see the difference between those who obey me doing the right thing and those who mm. reject me by doing wrong. And mm. I will spare them. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm. Wow. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> I, think wow. I, that. I have no regret. Wow. I have no blame. The young man who he collided with, I understand, was having, um, you know, some difficulty because he felt like it was his fault. Aww. But we can't take the credit for what God is doing in our life. No. What he chooses to do, what he Aww. chooses to date, what he chooses to get. We have we have no say in it. We can't take credit for what Amen. God does. We can't. So I, I definitely agree with that. And that is, you know, that's definitely a... Uh, a good segue to just, we're going to end on that note because, um, you know, we're all in different places on our spiritual journey. And I, and I admire Dana so much because she definitely, you know, she's always posting the doctor said this, but God said that we going to, God got the last say. And that's, Amen. So, and, and that's, that's what, that's what it all boils down to. God has Amen. the final say, you know, Amen. And we definitely cannot say that, um, you know, we we all have our healing is different for everybody. Grieving mm -hmm. is different for everybody. And everybody is on a different spiritual journey. And that's yeah. why I wanted to bring you all together because I said, well, hey, this might be the start of a great support group. You know, who yeah. knows? You guys, you know, <laughs> Cheryl and Sierra may be able to hook up and, and really, you know, Cheryl can mentor yeah. Sierra through this process, you know, and, yeah. and you guys can be something to each other. And, and the same with with all four of you ladies, you know, you all could find something as mothers where you can link and, and provide support. Dana has a, a Tuesday Bible study that she um, runs every Tuesday via Zoom. You know, maybe y'all can check in and share your stories. Sometimes God gives us these horrible stories so that we can save 10 more or 10,000. Amen. 
you know? Amen. And so every Dana, time. It, Dana, it sounds like I need to be in your in your in your in your yeah. Bible. Study, baby. <laughs> it, it starts at seven, y'all. Let me tell y'all, it starts at seven. I'm gonna put it right in the chat. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just I really appreciate you guys. This is the weekly PPE with Tisha Lassane. saying, What is your purpose? What is your passion? And what empowers you? These ladies have gone through some experiences experiences in life, and some of them are still living it, still going through it. However, they are still living in their purpose. They are still finding their passion and they are still empowered by something so much bigger and greater than any of us so for that i'm thankful to have all of you on today i hope that i get to talk to y'all soon and i hope that this will be something a good start to something for all yeah. of you so i just wish you peace prosperity joy most importantly peace understanding carriage all of those things that we need um to be great in life and so I thank you all, ladies, for being on. I truly do. This is the weekly PPE with Tisha saying, What's your purpose? What's your passion? What empowers you? Thank you so much. Be sure to tune in every Saturday from 2.30 to 3 o'clock on The Choice Radio, 105.3 FM, right out of Richmond, Virginia. It's your girl, Tisha saying. Thank you so much. What is your purpose? What's your passion? What empowers you?